Welcome to P. Clark Calc, Practical Calculus for the Busy Math Student. And here we're going to look at a couple of examples using the alternating series remainder to help us determine the precision of an estimate. In this example, we're trying to determine how many, how many terms do we need in a partial sum to come up with an accurate estimate of the, of the infinite sum to within 0 0.001. And here we're looking at the alternating series negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2n cubed minus 1. And so the tool that we're going to use to do that is the alternating series remainder, which is a great handy thing if you see that your series is alternating because the terms start canceling each other out as we move along. That the remainder is always, the magnitude of the remainder is always less than or equal to the magnitude of the next term, the one that's not used when you're determining your sum. So, so that's basically all we have to do. And so in this case, since we have an algebraic case here, we can go ahead and calculate this one algebraically. So we just have to think about for a second, what does a sub n plus 1 look like? Now in, this, in the definitions of the alternating series, when we say a sub n or a sub n plus 1, we're, we're talking about the magnitude of the series. We're not worried about the alternating factor. So in this case, then, a sub n plus 1 is going to be 1 over 2 times n plus 1 to the third minus 1. So we need to take that next term and set that as less than or equal to our value of 0 0.001. So, so here we're saying a sub n plus 1 has to be something less than or equal to 0 0.001. And in the case of an algebraic de defined series, then we can go ahead and do some algebra here. We have 1 over. 2 times n plus 1 to the third minus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over 1,000. And typically when we're solving this kind of a situation, your, your best bet right off the bat is to go ahead and do reciprocals. Remember when we take reciprocals, the sign is going to flip here on the algebra. So this is greater than or equal to 1,000. And then it's basically just a cubic equation at this point. So 2 times n plus 1 to the third is greater than or equal to 1,001. And then we divide by 2 here. So that's going to be 500.5. And then we go ahead and we take our cubed roots. So So n plus 1 is greater than or equal to the cubed root of 500.5, which is about 7.94. And then we subtract 1. So our value of n, the number of terms that we need to have this estimate to be within 0 0.001, is greater than or equal to 6.94. And then you have to remember that n is an integer always when we're talking about series so that we round that up and that tells us that we need a total of seven terms in order to come up with the desired accuracy on our estimate. If you go ahead and you calculate that what you find out is s sub 7 is approximately 0 0.9475 And so we know then that we're within 0 0.001 of that. Uh, it's not going to get much better on our estimate, no matter how many terms we use at that stage of the game. So that's how we can calculate the number of terms with a series that's defined by uh, an algebraic rational function. Let's just look at one more example here on a little different case. So now here we're going to try to do the same thing with this series negative 1 to the n over n factorial. And the, the problem here isn't the formula has changed or anything, it's the algebra involved. Because if we, if we ask ourselves, what is a sub n plus 1? It's 
the magnitude of the series 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And when you start getting involved in factorials, then there's no, there's no algebraic approach here to solve this equation. So if I'm trying to figure out when is 1 over n plus 1 factorial less than or equal to 1 over 1,000, I can't do the algebra that I did before with that other type of series. I can maybe take reciprocals and figure out, well, I'm looking for n plus 1 factorial to be greater than or equal to 1,000. And when, when we work it that way, then you just kind of have to go through and compare, guess, people call it guess and check, but you just have to go through numerically and go ahead and compare those values for your factorials. So if you, you probably should know the first few as you're going along, you know, 0 factorial is 1, 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, right, and so on. The 6 factorial is 720, and then 7 factorial is 5,040. So there, I've crossed the threshold. I've, I've gotten a large enough value there, and I just have to remember that, that n plus 1 factorial is what I'm looking for. So that means that n plus 1 equals 7. And so in this case, I need a total of just 6 terms in order to get the estimate to the desired accuracy that I want. So if we figure out the partial sum of the first six here, again you can do it on your calculator if you don't want to write it all out, but the sum of the first six turns out to be 0 0.368 roughly, and we know that that's going to be within 0 0.001 thanks to the alternating series remainder. So two cases we looked at. One, we could calculate the number of terms algebraically because of the type of series. If you start getting involved in factorials, there's not a ton of algebra you can do there. So you have to kind of just go through and use an inductive approach and try to determine when does that value cross the threshold that would make it your, your estimate accurate enough. To learn more about infinite series or calculus in general, you can find my textbooks available for a nice price on Amazon. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you liked it. And until next time, I'm Pete Clark.